Hi, this video is all about the different types of dinosaurs that we can find in the fossil record, how we can identify them on the basis of what we call their morphology, the, the shape or the form uh, of the bones that we find. We classify dinosaurs into two main groups, what we call the Saurusthicians and the Ornusthicians. And this is on the basis of the arrangement of bones in their pelvis. You have these three bones, the ilium, the pubis, and the ischium. Um, the ilium is sort of the, the hip bone, if you like. Um, the pubis is the pubic bone, and the ischium, I suppose, will be the bum bone, if, you, if we need a, a name for it. You can see from the two diagrams that the arrangement of the pubis and the ischium um, is different on the saurusthicians from that on the ornusthicians. Now there are some issues with this classification system uh, and fairly recently uh, a new system has been proposed um, but that perhaps goes beyond uh, the scope of this video. If we look at uh, a cladogram, so uh, a diagram that shows the relationship between different dinosaur groups, we can see the types of dinosaurs that we find in these two different uh, groups. So the ornithischians um, consist of groups like the uh, ornithopods, uh, the thyreophora, okay, the marginocephalia, okay, including things like triceratops. Ceratopsid dinosaurs. The saurusthicians include the, the theropods, which includes all the meat eaters, all the predators, uh, and the sauropods as well, the giant um, long neck, long tail dinosaurs. Let's look at the features of each of these so you can annotate your dinosaur cladogram. If we start with the saurusthicians, the theropods, these were the um, two legged three-toed um, dinosaurs, um, they're the, the meat eaters. All the meat eaters belong to this group. And so oddly, these are the dinosaurs that uh, evolved then into birds, even though these are the ones with the, the saurusthicians, the, the lizard or the reptile hips. That's one of the reasons for the uh, recent re-evaluation of the classification system of dinosaurs. Although I should stress that it's not been um, widely accepted. The sauropods are the uh, the monsters of the Jurassic. Um, these are the huge uh, quadrupedal, um, long neck, long tailed dinosaurs, uh, all herbivores. Um, they must have been a uh, a fairly incredible sight to see a, a herd of these moving through a landscape, stripping of it of its vegetation. Yeah, there must have been a, a machine for um, transforming, transforming plant material into energy and dung. If we move on to the ornithopods, um, this is quite a, a large, diverse group. Um, they're all plant eaters. Um, and could get round on either four legs or maybe some of them on two legs. Uh, some of them may even have um, been what we call uh, facultative quadrupeds so, or facultative bipeds. So they would have perhaps moved round on four legs most of the time and occasionally perhaps on two legs when the need arose. It does include uh, really interesting dinosaurs like um, the one on the left here, Parasaurophilus. Um, with its uh, large hollow crest that we think the dinosaur could use to make noise. The ornithischians also include uh, some of our most um, renowned dinosaurs, the ceratopsians, the uh, uh, like triceratops with the large uh, frill and horns around it, its head for, uh, used for display. Uh, we also have the uh, ankylosaurs, um, you can see the pictures of them here, the armoured dinosaurs, um, 
which you know looked fairly ferocious, but actually would have been uh, our sort of plant eaters um, who evolved this uh, incredible set of uh, adaptations um, to be able to uh, protect itself against predators. Uh, bones, even their eyelids were were bony. Now, one of the debates that uh, has raged through dinosaur paleontology is the uh, metabolism of a dinosaur. Were they warm-blooded or were they cold-blooded, like the reptiles? The difference between them is that the cold-blooded uh, animals, like reptiles, um, rely on external heat. They rely on um, being able to absorb heat from the sun um, with only a small amount of their, their energy uh, coming from food. The endothermic or the warm-blooded animals like ourselves, we generate our own internal heat uh, from the food that we eat. Now dinosaurs are an interesting group. They clearly evolved from reptiles, which are cold-blooded. But if we look at the evidence that we see, um, I, I personally don't believe that uh, it was possible for dinosaurs to have a, a cold-blooded lifestyle, cold-blooded metabolism. There's lots of evidence for this. Um, the structure of the bone. Um, tends to show the um, these canals for blood to be um, to move through the bone, typically uh, or very similar to what we see in um, warm-blooded animals today. The behaviours, um, the adaptations for um, prolonged fast running. The social behaviours that we saw dinosaurs had, um, living in herds, for example, building nests, tending for their young. These are warm-blooded behaviours, they're not cold-blooded ones. Hunting in packs. Um, there's, there's lots of these things that, uh, if we apply uniformitarianism, apply to modern warm-blooded animals, not cold-blooded. If we look at the structure of ecosystems, um, we see um, quite a broad-based food pyramid. Now, that's what we get in warm-blooded uh, ecosystems because, uh, obviously, warm-blooded organisms need more food than cold-blooded ones. We also find dinosaurs at all latitudes. That's not the case with reptiles. Reptiles are limited because of climate, length of day. Dinosaurs didn't appear to be. There are some um, small pieces of evidence, I think, that uh, would may sort of counter the cold-blooded um, argument. Um, particularly the fact that the climate back in the Mesozoic was a lot warmer than it is today. Um, the scaly skin that uh, dinosaurs had. Uh, some um, features of dinosaur lungs that we can tell. Okay, But to me, I, I think the evidence is, is fairly overwhelming that uh, they must have been warm-blooded, or certainly had features of that. Um, a, a, a endothermic um, metabolism fits far better with what... Uh, we know the dinosaurs could do. But what do you think? Perhaps go and uh, review the evidence. Okay? You know, it isn't absolutely definitive one way or the other. Okay? But we do see modern birds, which we know evolved from the dinosaurs, as being warm-blooded. It must have evolved sometime. When was that? So to conclude, we can see 
the features preserved in fossils give us a huge amount of information about the how we can classify dinosaurs and crucially as well how they lived what they ate how they moved how they uh, may have interacted with each other it's a fascinating topic one which we can only skim the the surface of anyway Make sure you come up with your interesting question and bring it along to class. I'll see you then.